that time of night. Question and answer if somebody's got one. Does some. Ah, ah, ah Ben. <laughs> Um, so I did a pun on stage, and I got a groan out of the audience, yeah. and I like to joke, but what do I do about that? Ah, puns. Puns are a very interesting case. Well, first of all, uh, I think the first thing you need, thing you need to do as a, as a comedian is decide what kind of a reaction do you want from the audience. I've had people, I say, well, you do, you get a groan there, and they go, well, at least it's a reaction. Yeah, so is the audience booing and telling you to get off stage, <laughs> right? But that's not what you want. Do you want a groan? I know, personally, I want as many big laughs as I can, and a bunch of big laughs in a row, ending with a huge laugh. That's what I want when I'm out there and stuff. I've never known anybody to design a show that got groans on groans on groans <laughs> on groans, because... That's what they wanted, okay? So first you gotta kinda decide, and set a standard and go, okay, when I'm on stage, I, I, I'm not after groans, uh, and when I get them, I will work around it to find, and if I, especially if you like the joke, uh, find a way to maybe, maybe rework it to, to get the laugh that you're looking for. So that's the first thing, is going, I, I want laughs. <laughs> the next thing is, Let's look at the groans themselves. There's, for me, two basically flavors of groans. Uh, the first one is the millennial groan, which is new, <laughs> right? The millennial groan is a new phenomenon that comedians, and times are changing, audiences are changing, we have to adapt. You can complain about it or adapt. Um, so, uh, the millennial laugh is really a, a disapproving laugh, a disapproving groan that's saying, you've just been politically incorrect, according to me. <laughs> and, and everybody that is like me. <laughs> that's a particular kind of groan. Now, the kind of groan you're talking about is uh, a groan from a pun, which is, I find, uh, uh, well, first of all, let me, let me talk about puns in general. Uh, they can be really, really funny, okay? I, I want you to understand that uh, uh, there's comedians that use them that get really, really big laughs and stuff. Uh, in improv, they're really, really great. Uh, I had an improv uh, troupe, the uh, Good Company, this guy named Brian Bradley was in it, and he did songs, and he did a terrific improv. I did a lot of puns. When puns are done uh, spontaneously, they usually get a really good laugh because the audience is watching the act of creativity as opposed to... Uh, uh, a one like with yours where you sat and worked on the joke and then the audience knows you're presenting a joke that has a pun in it, okay? So th it's kind of a different, I mean, puns are great for cartoons, for, because I, I used to be that I would say, oh, just kind of avoid puns, that was in my book, and I've really changed my position on that, to say puns can be really funny and there's, there's some, can be some difficulties with them, which is what you've run into. So. Now, when you, you put the pun word at the end of the punchline sentence, right, uh, it has a tendency to say to the audience, look how clever I just was with language. <laughs> <laughs> right? You follow us? Uh, the old, there's an old joke was... Uh, 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 the... the, the uh, room, uh, Rooming, the rooming house, the rooming house, you know, the apartment blew up, and rumors were flying. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, right? So, and so I'm saying, you're always being really clever with the language, with the word rumor, you know. Uh, you know, and rumors as in people, and rumors as in talk uh, were flying, and the audience, uh, uh. So, um... That's, I find it has a tendency is when you put that pun at the end or near the end and put it in the, in, in the, in the punchline, it says to the audience, look how clever I've just been with language, and there is more of a tendency to get a groan there. Okay. Now, what's the answer? The answer is to put that pun word in the setup and use it as a misdirection device. Uh, that, that it ends up, it's an ambiguity that you'll use as your connector between the two stories and the setup and the punch, right? Uh, 
and it will it will serve uh, the story, first and second story of uh, the joke in general. It's serving the humor of it, like uh, my wife's my wife's an excellent housekeeper. When we got divorced, and that bitch kept the house. Okay, so that now the pun is housekeeper, meaning she's a good homemaker, meaning she was you know sharp in the divorce and was able to get the deed to the home and the divorce and be able to keep the house. That serves a, a, a situation there about a man who looks like he's proud of his wife and then he's divorced and, and is very bitter about it. Okay, that's, that's a whole lot different than saying, look how good I'm funny I've been, how clever I've been with language, right? So now it's, it's, it's in your setup. And it also becomes your misdirection device. It, it sets the target assumption for that joke. You know, she, she cleans the house. And then the connector, and then the second meaning for it, is the reinterpretation is that she, she kept the house. She takes the house. Okay. Then I find uh, audiences don't groan at those because they don't even notice that there's a pun being used on those. Because you're not saying, look how clever I'm being with language. The language then helps to make the joke and is actually the mechanism that actually makes the joke work. And then I find it to be incredibly, uh, uh, gets really, can get a really, really robust laugh. And it's still a pun.